my conclusion for for 2020 i do think right now aurora is sitting at what three dollars and i don't know eight cents something like that yeah, I, I do think we're gonna no for sure i think if anything now is one of the best times to buy when have we seen numbers like this i feel like i've been asking for these numbers for a long yeah. time versus Honestly. i can understand why someone would be scared to invest when they bought aurora at What's going on, guys? I'm here with Aaron from Departures Capital, and today we're going to be talking about Aurora and whether this company will resurrect in 2020. How's it going, Aaron? Going great. It's going great. Excited to be here, and it's nice to see you back. Yeah, it's good to be back. And also, before we get this video started, don't forget, give us a quick thumbs up. If you're new to any of our channels, don't forget, hit that notification bell, smash that subscribe button, and let's get this video started. Yes, sir. Let's talk a little bit about what's been going on recently for ACB. Let's let's also bring up uh, 2019 charts just to see how they performed this year. Yeah. Or, or even all-time charts if possible. All right. So, yeah, we can pull up the all-time charts. I mean, it was more volatile over a shorter period of time. If you look back in 2018, I mean, we hit, what, 16 bucks and then down to five. This has been like a long drawn out decline yeah it feels like almost all of 2019 we've been on the downfall minus the first couple months i'm sure we've all heard of the january effect mm -hmm. so i think definitely in the beginning of 2020 um just like in 2019 we had a huge run in the yeah right here 2020 I won't be surprised to see Aurora or ACB go on a huge run. That's what the January effect is. Usually for December, people are collecting profits, cutting losses, all for tax purposes. So we might see an even bigger sell-off. Do you think we're going to have a Santa Claus rally? The only thing that worries me is the fact that, you know, markets are at all-time highs. Yeah. And you haven't really seen cannabis stocks perform. So realistically, I do think that there's a floor, but where is the floor? You know what I mean? It's like two bucks. 250 it could definitely fall a little bit more one thing i did want to mention though was the fact that acb's ceo terry booth just bought a million bucks worth of stock almost a million bucks i mean to them that's really not much but i guess yeah. that's better news versus like when cam badly sold i forget how many over a million worth of shares so yeah apparently that was because his house burned down but i'm, I'm not too yeah. sure about that yeah, I actually, um, I, I tweeted him and he responded and he told me it was because his house burned down. But it, it's a lot of speculation going on. People are saying yeah. um, if you own a house like that, you obviously have home insurance that would cover all that. Yeah. So maybe he was just saying that as a cover up. But who knows? I, I'm not here to call Ken Batley a liar. I think honestly, we're going to have a, a nice January, February, a huge run. Because if you look at it in, in the past, ACB has always had huge sell-off before the year ends 2019 we had a yep. nice sell-off and then uh, once the year started we had a huge run 2018 i think actually we had a huge run at the end of the at the end of the year but then um january we had a sell-off and then we continued i don't know i guess we we had a huge sell-off all of 2018 and then finally it was the legalization hype that brought it back up so yeah exactly you know we hit the we hit lows and then it was it was legalization from like if you look at it, it's like from five bucks to like 16 and then back down to five or six to about 13. But this time around, I wonder what we can do if we do see another run three bucks all the way to nine or 10 would be nice. Yeah. I, I, at this point, I don't think we will be seeing those highs of 15, 16, because back then that was just all hype. There was no numbers. It was all, yeah. oh, it's going to be legal or this and that. Um, the only thing that could really bring a little bit of hype is when C um, CBD, all these edibles become, well, they're illegal now, but I think they have the two month waiting period for health candidates. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think um, ACB will go on a huge run or do you think it's going to go even lower? I think it's going to kind of stabilize until we see some substantial results. I mean, I don't think it's just going to keep on falling because eventually like valuations are going to make sense when it comes to revenue. There are a couple negative issues, but there's obviously some positive things like we're going to have rollout of Canadian retail in 2019. And hopefully we're going to get a better rollout compared to what we've seen. These stores are so bottlenecked. Yeah. If, if you put your, if you put your mouse on $6, 
um you can see we kind of like on six dollars no no just just put the long-term charts and put it on six dollars okay okay so so you can kind of see that there's like a support there acb has consistently yeah. bounced on that i feel like we could finally find a support around there around six dollars and we'll be bouncing around that price um a lot of people won't be happy because i, I know a lot of like your my viewers and your viewers have yeah. purchased acb around 10 and above mm -hmm. which, um now, of course, you want to see ACB go above ten again, but I, I definitely think we'll be stabilizing around six to seven dollars. It all depends on the company. We can't we can't just say it's going to go up and then ACB doesn't do nothing new. They have to like keep breaking their numbers. They they their sales have to go up. Their revenue has to go up. And then, and then that's the only thing that will seem to push the market forward. But on, on the bright side, like I said, CBD and edibles will become legal. So that, that gives them more profit margins. That those things are more expensive to, to sell versus dried flower where it's like anyone can, can grow a plant. Um, so exactly, exactly. It does create a, a whole new market um, for them to create even more revenue. But unless they do something drastic, some, something amazing, I don't think that this company will be going above $10 anytime soon maybe at near the end of the year do you think they're even going to be profitable next year uh i remember cam batley said they would have um positive EBITDA this year and he kept saying next quarter next quarter and yeah, it's tough it's going to come down to once again you know how well is how successful is the edibles launch and when they start to see revenues from that and how successful is the rollout of retail like they really need to bring up revenues with that retail they need to find what works and focus on it. I do like the fact that, you know, a lot of, they gave the company flack for stopping construction on their two facilities to save money. But at this point in the game, it kind of makes sense. Like there's a bottleneck in the whole chain and you need to stop expansion, focus on what makes sense, making money and then resume operations. Like, cause international revenues won't be realized for, another while at least i don't know how long exactly but i mean a free is doing a good job with international revenues but acb i don't know how long it'll take them to yeah. realize some of those international revenues but that's something they always tote as being like the most international cannabis company right exactly like in 25 countries but we don't really hear much about it i mean recently they they did say that they were accepted in ireland for cbd oils of course we've he heard about germany but like I haven't really heard much about everything else. And if they're, they take pride in that, they, I think they should really step up their game internationally. Yeah. And exactly. also another big thing is we don't want to see Aurora have any like negative media and like, like the stuff that happened with Afria, with Cantrust. We can't see no allegations, not, none of that stuff with uh, Aurora or else we, the company, not only will this company go down, the whole sector will be brought yeah. down. And it's not just Aurora. It's like even if another company, which isn't fair, uh, has some negative media around them, some sort of um, allegations, some sort of like short attack, it, it, it can affect, uh, um, affect Aurora. So that's, but that's like out of Aurora's control. It's like we ha kind of have to have almost a perfect year for that to happen yeah definitely no short interest increased on most of the cannabis stocks yeah. one thing though i mean it, there was an it would cost i believe an average of 24 percent to go short per company per year so the 10 10 most shorted stocks it was like 24 percent interest per year to short them so that's definitely one thing and um in terms of the short interest in the cannabis sector i mean they've definitely created a negative environment for people you know people are scared to get into the sector they see the kind of losses that can take place yeah i still think there's lots of opportunity it's it's more so like a war zone now but i mean there's like you know there's the hype has died down you need to yeah. really do your research find those good companies but like if you can fight your way through it there's still awesome gains to be made just in my opinion in the future yeah. no for sure i think if anything now is one of the best times to buy. When have we seen numbers like this? I feel like I've been asking for these numbers for a long yeah. time versus Honestly. I can understand why someone would be scared to invest when they bought Aurora at 14, at $12, they've lost almost 70, 80% of their investment, which exactly. obviously, um, investors are losing confidence be because of that. But let's say a new investor is deciding to invest into MG stocks uh, and they invested now. I feel like now it's like, how much lower can it go? I feel like from here, 
there's there's only one direction these companies can go up. Yes, it might be a little volatile. Maybe they'll be trading sideways for a little while. But I think at this point, I don't I don't see Aurora going down to a dollar. It, it's possible, but I don't see it happening. Maybe below two dollars if something horrible happened and some some more short attacks happen. But I feel like at this point, it's the safest bet versus you all, you know what they say, you got to buy low and sell high, not not buy high and then panic sell low. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right now is definitely one of the best times to invest in these companies. Um, I've, I've averaged down on certain positions, especially because they're just like ridiculously low prices. We haven't seen these numbers since 2017. Yeah. So I, I think right now it is a, a, a buying opportunity, but there's still a lot of risk involved because this market is still very young and very volatile and very unpredictable. Totally. And there's what, there's two quotes, isn't it? Be greedy when others are fearful and be yeah. fearful when others are greedy. And then yeah. also buy when blood is running in the streets, right? Yeah. And and right now a lot of people are fearful. They're, they're scared of this sector mostly because, and I would, I don't blame them, especially if, if I was a new investor, I came in and I bought Aurora at 10, at $14, yeah. I'd be scared. I'm like, what the hell? I lost 70% of my money. I feel bad for the new investors who, who came in, like just pretty much uh, followed the herd and, and now they're, they're pretty much suffering for it. So totally. And that was just like crypto. That, that happened, same thing in crypto too. I made videos and I always said I would I would never invest more than 5% of my portfolio on crypto. Yeah. And I think uh, I put a total of like $500, which is even less than like a percent on crypto. It was, <laughs> it's more like fun money, just like, just to, just to be a part of it. It was just, it was money that, I, it was casino money, money I was willing to lose. And, yeah. and I still have my money in crypto and it's, it, I don't even look at it. I don't care for it. If, if one day it goes up, it goes up. If it goes down below 5k, I might add another hundred dollars. It's just at this point, it's just, it's just fun money. It's, it's nothing too serious. I would never invest thousands of dollars into crypto. Totally. So yeah, in terms of 2020, I mean, we talked about our outlook, you know, mm -hmm. we know what needs to happen. Just yeah. first, they just need to show results. Yeah. That's pretty much we're both in agreement in, in agreement on that. Yeah. Um, Another good thing would be a partnership, but I think at this point, I don't think Aurora will even want to have a partner because at this point, I think they will be lowballed. Um, I don't know how maybe Cam Batley or Terry Booth they were they were overconfident because they were saying yeah. well, we don't want to get a partnership and sell our company now when tomorrow we could sell it for more. Well, today is tomorrow and now there's no way <laughs> you're going to get the same offer now that you would have got a year ago that you would have got even seven, even at the beginning of the year. Now, let's say a company would have offered you, I don't know, $5 billion like they offered Canopy. Now you yeah. probably will, will be lucky to get 2 billion, 1 billion, because now you're, the company is like at least like one third less than what it was a year ago. So it's a partner would be nice, but I doubt that would happen unless we see a huge run because um, we know Aurora CEOs, I think, I think they take a lot of pride in this company and, and they didn't want to sell themselves short. And they thought that in the long run, who knows, it might still be a good thing in the long run, but right now it was, it's looking like a bad decision right now. Canopy, Kronos, those companies are lucky to have those partnerships because they have all that cash and they that got it. And they got that cash when they were way above the prices they're at now. If, if they accepted those deals now, I don't think they would get any anything close to that amount of money. Yeah, exactly. Constellation Brands just said they're not going to invest any more into Canopy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're probably, I don't know if they're regretting their investment. They're probably like, we should have waited. Because right now, I, I, any company that's willing to invest into these companies would get a way better deal. So I think at this point... I don't, I don't see any partnerships happening in 2019 unless Aurora goes back to the tens and then they get a, a good offer yeah. because that we, we all know they don't want to sell themselves short, but they should have done it a year ago when the opportunities came because apparently a lot of companies were lining up ready to invest in this company. And what do you think? Do you think that was a mistake by Aurora or do you think in the long run it's all going to pay off? It's hard to say. I mean, Aurora always faces like the fact that they need to constantly dilute in order to, yeah. you know, they need to constantly dilute in order to raise money and all that kind of stuff. So it hasn't worked in favor of the shareholders yet. So that's obviously like, I'm not happy about that. Um, in the long run, being in full control of the company, it may pan out, but that could be 
three to five years before, you know, we see that actually benefit us. So it's like, will it, do you want short term gains? Um, I feel like Aurora stock would be higher right now if they had accepted an offer. You know what I mean? Sure. So we probably would have hit all time highs of 20. If we, if we accepted that offer, we've seen what happened to, to canopy. They went from 36 oh, yeah. to $75. Uh, Cron went from like $12, $14 to like above $30. Aurora at the time was at $10, $12. I think we for sure would have went above $20 yeah. of collected profits. It w I think we would have been happy. And then on top of that, they wouldn't have to dilute as much shares. We're over a billion shares. And I think cash is still a problem from them. So what, are they going to continue diluting shares? So it's just, um, I don't I don't think it was a good decision right now. Maybe three to yeah. five years down the road, we might be like, okay, okay. Um, they get like a $10 billion offer. Who knows? And then it will be worth it then. But I, I, I'm not happy that they, they didn't accept the deal when they had plenty of opportunities. Yeah, I know. We'll see what happens like with the whole sector. Like you said, if the stock recovers and they do dominate and they do become much more valuable than they were and then they accept an offer or something we'll see what happens let's do it let's do our conclusion like uh yeah. what do we think like share prices we don't have to give a, a number but will they be below yeah. or what they are above now so so like my conclusion for for 2020 i do think right now aurora is sitting at what three dollars and i don't know eight cents something like that yeah, I, I do think we're gonna stabilize around six dollars but maybe a little below and then hopefully go above that but i do think we we will be going up in 2020 i, I don't see it going to a dollar unless we see some huge short attack doesn't matter if it's towards aurora it's if it's towards any big company investors will lose um, confidence so unless that happens i do think aurora will be maybe even going up 100% in 2020, mostly because we're so low and there's only one yeah. direction we can really go up right now. That would be sweet. I'm going to have to agree with you. I do feel like there's more positive catalysts than there are negatives. And not to mention all of the negativity for the last, you know, mm -hmm. eight months, nine months, is it now? Yeah. Almost. I feel like, you know, the whole sector is just oversold. When people yeah. rebalance their portfolios for 2020, they're going to look and they're going to be like, Am I going to put money in the fangs? No, the fangs are at all-time highs. Yeah. Am I going to put money in the S&P 500 index fund? It's at all-time highs. What's cheap right now? Oh, cannabis is cheap. And it's got lots of growth potential. So personally, I think that, you know, we could see some nice capital inflows early next year. So let's hope. Fingers crossed. <laughs> for sure. So, yeah, guys, we'll see what happens for ACB. Can the stock double in 2020? I think it could, yeah. especially at the at these prices. If it was at six dollars, ten seven dollars, ten dollars, I'd be like, no, we might go up ten twenty percent. But the yeah. fact that we're like twenty seventeen numbers, like we haven't seen these numbers since twenty seventeen, mm -hmm. I think it's possible. But it could easily double, and then in the next month, it it loses half of those gains. So that's just how volatile these markets are, and that's why I always collect profits and I can't tell people what to do, but every time I collect profits, I've made a video about it. And yeah, yeah like even if people are like, why would you sell? I'd be like, That's, it's too volatile for me to bag hold these companies. All right, guys, always remember departures capital and investing hustler We're for information, education and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy a stock because you heard it on here. You heard it from me or you heard it from us. Buy a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence and you're making those personal investment decisions for yourself. We're out of here, guys. We'll be bringing you more videos, more collabs. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for Investing Hustler and Partners Capital. Yeah. And if you enjoy these kind of videos, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. Just click it. it takes one second. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for now, guys. Bye-bye.